Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Once again, as I committed, let's start with a new learning. In my previous session, I covered SIL, MIL, HIL. I covered the different topologies, architecture and the use cases. But when it comes to the high accuracy results, we always talk about the HIL testing. So what are the different components used in the HIL testing? Very important real-time simulator, fault insertion unit, breakout box, load box, programmable power supply, and definitely the host PC. So today I'm gonna cover you all everything. What are the use cases of these all the components? What are their role and how it effectively used for the HIL testing? So let's start with that learning. Hello friends. In the last uh, knowledge sharing session, we talk about the SIL, MIL and HIL. So today I'm gonna cover more detail on the HIL testing. What are the topics which I'm gonna cover today is use cases in the various disciplines programmable power supply, uh, what is the real-time simulator, what is fault insertion unit, record box, load box, what is the use of host PC, everything I'll cover uh, in HIL testing, that is the hardware and loop testing. So before jumping to more in detail, uh, let's talk more about the product development. So it could bring a base for you to understand what is HIL and why it is being used. In many cases, the most effective way to develop an embedded system or any new product is to connect the connect that system to the real time um, plant. But uh, it's very difficult always to put down the new development, any product actually to the system. So in other cases, HL simulation is more efficient way. The metric of development and testing efficiency is typically a formula, and that includes the different factors. So out of that, I'm going to cover the few factors which are very important when it comes to development and testing a new product. The first one is the cost. The cost of the approach should be a measure of the cost of all tools and the efforts. Whatever the efforts are required to develop that product and the efforts manpower required to bring that product to the market it's very important this is a one of the driving factor the next is duration the duration of the development and the testing affects the time to market for a planned product so it may delay your product or something may happen so this, this is very important time to market is a very important factor that is the duration the third important point is the safety safety factor and the deployment direction are typically equated to the cost measure. And the safety as well as the duration are directly linked to the cost. That's very important. The last one is the feasibility. It is extremely useful for feasibility study of any product in extreme environmental conditions. So these four factors are very important when it comes to new development of the product when you are going for uh, the development and doing the testing this is very important and here the hl testing helps a lot so what are the use cases there are multiple use cases for the hl simulation uh, out of that i'm bringing major areas here so specific condition that warrant the use cases of hl simulation includes the different major areas and out of that the first one is enhancing the quality of the testing the usage of hil enhances the quality of the testing by increasing the scope of the testing ideally an embedded system would be tested against the real plant but most of the time the real plant itself imposes the limitations in terms of the scope of the testing for example testing an engine control unit as a real plant can create a dangerous conditions for the test engineer it's not possible to test or it is harmful for the operator as well. So second very important is a tight development schedules. Tight development schedules associated with the most new automotive aerospace and defensive programs do not allow embedded system testing to wait for a prototype to be available. You cannot wait for the product or the prototype is built because building a prototype again is a complex in terms of the time, in terms of the cost. Every supplier needs to in line with the timeline of the project. And if the product or the any component of that product is now not available with the supplier as of the shelf, 
uh, availability, then the supplier may ask for the higher cost. So in fact, most new development schedules assume that the HL simulation will be used in parallel with the development of the plant and here the HL effectively used. So for example, let's take an example. By the time a new automobile engine prototype is made available for a control system testing and 95% of the engine controller testing will have been completed using the HIL simulation. That's the beauty. And let's talk about the next point. That's the uh, next area is high burden rate plant. In many cases, the plant is more expensive than the high fidelity real time simulator and therefore has a higher burden rate. Therefore, it is more economical to develop and test while connected to HL simulator than the real plant. For jet engine manufacturer, HL simulation is a fundamental part of the engine development. It saves the cost, duration, it helps for the safety, everything. The last are the early process human factor development. So HL simulation is a key step in the process of developing human factors. A method of ensuring usability and system consistency using software ergonomics, human factors research and design. So these are the four areas where uh, we clearly define the use cases of the HL. There are multiple areas which defines the use case of the HL, but these are the major which drives the use of the HL. So till now we have seen what is the motivation uh, behind the HIL, what are the different areas while taking uh, into consideration while development, development of the new product and the area which uh, truly impact when it comes to bring new product to the market. But let's start talking more about how HIL works in very simple language. Here is your issue. Just imagine you are driving a car. So this ECU is an electronic controller unit which drives uh, so many outputs, right? So it takes the power from the battery and that battery might be a um, 12 volt, 24 volt or 32 based on the vehicle type, okay? So it drives the different outputs. What this ECU is mean for? It is used to drive some outputs like actuators, fuel injectors, relays, lamps or the valves. This is the use of the issue in actual vehicle, okay? And how it drives, whatever the algorithm written inside the ECU uh, based on the inputs. So these are the inputs like cramp position sensor. So different sensors inputs that directly goes to the ECU. And uh, there might be some switches like fog lamp switch, roof lamp switch or headlamp, anything. So all the switches, even the ignition key barrel switch, inputs, uh, crank position switch, everything that goes to the ECU and ECU takes the decision out of that and drive the output. So in actual scenario, this is how the ECU works in the vehicle. But now let's talk about the HIL. Very simple language, I'm bringing you the concept of the HIL, how the HIL works. So this, output whatever the relays or any lamps was there it gets replaced with the real-time simulators output as well as with the help of the load box we simulate that so we don't use the actual load again i'm very cautious about using the term don't use it is purely dependent if it is possible to put down a small uh, output like lamps or any relay or the actuators you can directly use that loads to the ECU in the hill test rig. But if you cannot use the actual load like electric machine, if your lab is not able to sustain or tolerate that much of the noise, you can use the load box. If you need simple LEDs like on and off or want to drive some uh, outputs in analog term, then you can use uh, the real-time simulator to simulate that electrical characteristics of that load. So actually what happens? Your output get replaced with the real-time simulator and the load box. So when we talk about the HIL rig or the HIL lab, you replace your loads or you can even 
use actual loads, whatever the loads are easily available, does not make a noise as well as um, low in terms of the cost. You can directly use, otherwise you can simulate uh, with the help of load box and the real simulator. So this is how you drive your output. You have to use the actual ECU. You don't need to replace the ECU. You can put the hardware. That's what hardware in loop. You are putting your hardware in the loop of the simulated environment. So what you are simulating, you can simulate the load. And as well as you can simulate your battery, no need to use actual battery in the lab. You can use a programmable power supply and this programmable power supply can be accessed through the host PC and can be set as per the requirement. If your issue need some certain amount of the current, you can set that current limits. If your issue need certain amount of operating voltage, you can set that voltage and that can be accessed through the Ethernet cable by the host PC and you can set that. That's what it is called a programmable power supply. You can set the current limits, voltage limit, power limit, everything that's possible. And on the other end, the input side where your sensors are there, the input switches are there with the help of real time simulator, real time simulator, you simulate that inputs. Just imagine you need a switch position like on and off. What do you need? You need a digital output with the help of this real time simulator and whatever the IO expansions that real time machine drives, you just use that analog input output, digital input output, PWM input output or CAN, whatever the type of the signal you need, just use that card here program this real time simulator with the help of host PC and access specific pin of driver the specific spin of that card and connect that pin to your ECU. That means just imagine, let's say this is a digital output card. So with the help of host PC, what I will do, I will drive this pin as high and low based on my need and fed that input to the ECU. So what I'm doing, I'm completely replacing the inputs with this real time simulator. And this is what and this is how the HIL works. And this host PC is basically used where you can simulate that inputs or simulate uh, any of the behavior of the um, system which are actually required to fed uh, any output to the issue or fed any input to the issue. This is what your all the softwares and the simulation runs here and it communicate with this real time simulator uh, on the Ethernet. So though I'm presenting here two real time simulators in actual setup, you can use only one simulator, but it is a rush. It is completely dependent. If your application says you need more input output card and your real time simulator is capable to drive that input output card, then you know no need to use multiple real time simulators. You can use a single real time simulator and you can have the uh, IO expansion card and you can suffice uh, the, your need or your purpose. So this is the overall picture how a child works and very simple language how it works. You need to put the actual issue on the rig and you have to simulate the input and output and with the help of host PC or the software loaded into host PC, you have to communicate with the real time simulator to the load box and simulate uh, the input and outputs as well as the programmable power supply. That's it. This is how the HL works. But, but when it comes to the actual rig, what are the different components are in the HL setup? When I say the HL setup, what are the different parts I need to take care need to consider what are the different component of the HIL setup. The first one is a real time simulator. As I said, a real time simulator, which are very high complex uh, with the processor, which simulate uh, your loads, which simulates the, the system, which simulates the input and output. So this is very important. The real time simulator is very important when it comes to HIL or setting up the HIL rig. Another is the ECU. So you actually use the ECU and um, it, your ECU is very small and you can simulate that ECU, you can simulate. You can use the load as an actual. So that's what it is called hardware and loop. You are using the actual hardware and looping the environment in the simulation form. So mostly 
most of the organizations, including automotive, aerospace industry, they use the actual hardware, they use the actual issues and simulate uh, the other uh, interfaces like input and output. Fault insertion unit. This unit is very important. When I say the fault in insertion unit, just imagine, just a moment ago, I talked about the load. Whatever the load or the output issue is driving, um, there, there is a one wire link between issue and the load. Just imagine if you want to inject some fault to that output, you use the fault insertion unit. What do you have to do? You have to externally um, break that link between the issue and the output load and inject external signals. So that signals might be a wrong signal. So that's what this fault insertion unit is used. Another unit, another component of the HL rig is a breakout box. Again, the breakout box uh, plays a very important role. Just imagine if your load is getting shorted to the battery, if your load is, uh, gets open or it's shorted to the power supply, such kind of testing can easily be done with the help of breakout box. As a name suggests, as a name indicates, you are breaking the link between ECU and the output load. You are breaking the link between the input to the ECU. So breakout box and fault insertion unit. Basically, these are very important when it comes to testing specific ECU's performance or specific algorithm. These units are very important. The next one is the load box. Load box is uh, basically if not possible to put down the actual loads into the lab, you can simulate that. There are different types of the load to the ECU like capacitive load, inductive load, resistive load. You can simulate the behavior of that load uh, through the software which are installed on the host PC. You can set up the limits for operating voltages. You can set up the limits for the operating current, power rating. Everything can be done with the help of the software and you can actually simulate, simulate the load. So this is the load box and it's again very important part of the HIL setup and the last one is a programmer power supply i earlier talked on the programmer power supply you can uh, easily set up the operating voltages as per your need you set the limits on the currents upper limit lower limit even you can set up the program to shut down if some uh, current uh, crosses the, the set point of the current or the limit of the current, you can set the program that way to shut down the power supply. So this is the beauty of the HL um, setup. So when we talk about the HL test rig, these are the very important component. The ECUs, the actual hardware, real-time simulator, fault insertion unit, breakout box, load box, programmable power supply, and very important is your host PC. Your host PC must be capable to handle the model complexity. If your model is too complex, having the high fidelity, your PC should have uh, actually uh, um, that much of the capability in terms of the handling the program, in terms of the handling the simulation. So it should be uh, much capable, should have um, accordingly the RAM. Um, so most of the time, it's a question how much RAM I should use for my host PC. It is purely dependent on your application. If your application asks for more RAM, please go ahead with the super um, RAM or the higher capacity of the RAM. Just you have to make sure that your program will not get uh, hanged or latency. You are not compromising the latency. Just you have to make sure that you are capable to run your simulation without any error, without any skipping uh, any samples of your output. So this host PC, is used to simulate your actual um, system or the the environment around the ECU, as well as it can be used to uh, simulate the user interface. So here, what I'm showing here, it's a, a vehicle speed, and here I'm showing the electric motor uh, speed. So uh, based on your need, you can even put down some switches like ignition, crank, or any, um, uh, shut down or any uh, uh, operation if you want to make it on and off. That way you can put down the switches as well, the dials, any malfunction indicator lamps. That way you can put down here. So that's how the host PC 
actually plays a role. It connects with the real time simulator through the Ethernet cable. Um, it compiles the code or the, the models, the simulation model which are running on the host PC and flash that code to the real time simulator. A real time simulator is a supercomputer and it, it consists and it operates on the real time operating system. It does not use the normal operating system. There are multiple types of the operating system, real time operating system, mostly far lab or Red Hat operating systems are being used uh, by the different competitors or the different suppliers who provide the real time simulator. Coming here on the test rig, usually how it looks like, but it is not necessary. So the way the image is there, you can even uh, go to the local supplier and bring your test rig, HL test rig. What you have to do, you just have to make the push and pull type of the trolleys where you can easily push your uh, simulator based on the size of the simulator and you must be able to pull uh, some of the racks uh, or the trolleys uh, to insert any fault or something like that. So what is the thumb rule? When you prepare your HR test setup, the thumb rule is the programmable power supply and your real time operating system should be at the bottom. The reason, very simple reason, you never or uh, instead of saying the neighbor, you cannot frequently access access in terms of the hardware access. You cannot come remove or pull the trolley of the real time um, simulator uh, from this rig. You cannot frequently pull and push that. So it is um, best or uh, it is always preferred to have real time simulator and programmable power supply at the bottom of the rig. Because if one of the trolley if you frequently need to pull and push then it makes the discomfort for the operator uh, to daily bend and pull it and push it again so it completely discomfort to the operator so this is a thumb rule when it comes for a uh, real-time uh, uh, simulator again i mentioned that real-time simulator and programmers have pro power supply at the bottom uh, it is up to you either you can put down the real time simulator down then the program power somewhere up or up and down or vice versa it's up to you but very important that the fault insertion unit in the breakout box make sure that fault insertion unit and the breakout box is at your uh, eyesight because you frequently need to inject the external signal to create the fault as well as you frequently need to break the link and short that specific pin of the ECU to the ground or to the battery. So record box and fault insertion unit should be at the height or eyesight of the operator. And ECU, again, the ECU uh, trolley should be such a way that uh, because you need frequently pull and push. Frequently means um, twice a week or twice a month. That way you may need it. You may change the ECU. You may use the another ECU or another product to test. You need to pull the trolley frequently. So again, uh, somewhere around your eyesight, you can put the ECU rack. And uh, then again, the load box uh, is uh, not that much of the frequently accessible because uh, through the Ethernet cable, through your host PC or the software running on your host PC, you can access uh, this uh, load box. You can simulate the load box, so no need to put the load box uh, on your eyesight or somewhere here in the middle where it is, can be easily accessible. You can put out on the top of the uh, test rig. So this is the general rule how you can set up your test rig and no need to go for very sophisticated way, but uh, this is how uh, the HL test setup looks or the HL uh, setup test rig looks um, and it is up to you. Uh, either you can go with the two setups, you can go with a single setup, but the rational or the criteria is your need basically if your need says you need a two uh, real time simulator go for the two real time simulator and the driving factor is the performance of your system and the fidelity of your model but uh, this is how hl uh, setup and the test rigs looks but what is the process flow when i say the issue must be somewhere in between for easy access accessible but where it inputs and outputs should go that it's go through the fault insertion unit to the host PC or from the host PC uh, to the real time simulator to directly to the ECU. That's very important to understand the process flow and the reasons behind 
the connections wiring harness happens behind this test rig. So let's jump for and understand what is the process flow in the HIL. So this is how the process flow happens. Just moment ago, I talked on the host PC where you run your simulation, you run the software which shows the user interface and um, uh, you completely run your simulation, generate the executable file and flash to the real time simulator. So this host PC directly connected with your real time simulator as well as the load box. The reason to uh, connection is it access uh, the uh, uh, the IO interfaces, analog, digital, PWM, CAN, everything, whatever is required for your need, needs to be accessed by the software or the simulation models running on this host PC. So it is directly connected through the Ethernet cable um, to real time simulator. And this is also required to configure the load box, capacitive load box, their limits on the current and voltage, resistive load box, inductive load box, everything is possible. For that, you need to have the direct, direct access. Sometimes you access the load box directly from the ACO, but the accessing means it does not have the control on the load box. Accessing means you can directly connect the load um, to the ACO. That's how there is a direct connection between the ACO and the load box. Jumping to the next is the real time simulator. The real time simulator is connected to the host PC as well as the fault insertion unit. Imagine your model is driving some output and you have simulated here. And that is, a, let's say, the switches or the sensor behavior. It is connected to the ECO uh, through this real time simulator where the signal conditioning and everything happens on your actual signal, which are simulated with the help of the software and the real time simulator like analog behavior or the digital behavior or any uh, customized pulse or the sensor behavior, everything. If you want to inject some fault, this fault insertion unit must be in between uh, the ECU and the real time simulator. And uh, uh, once the ECU hands it the signal or uh, take the feedback from the load as well as um, does some operations and send back signals, it should also go back to the real time simulator or to the host PC. That's what there is a direct connection between the ECU as well as the real time simulator. This is hardware, actual hardware you have connected and it needs some power like 12 volt, 24 volt or the 32 volt based on the operating voltage. Uh, you need to provide that through the programmable power supply. So this programmable power supply um, provides the power to the ECU and it is also access to the uh, host PC. Host PC connect through the Ethernet cable uh, to this programmable power supply. Imagine that you need to break some link from the load to the ECU and see the behavior. If the load is open, how the ECU behaves, or if the load is shorted to the ground, shorted to the battery, how the ECU behaves, what fault is occurs, what DTC is throws, and if you want to see that DTC, you need to program that uh, into your user interface. Wherever is the user interface, if you want to show some LEDs, you sh you can simulate that into this host PC with the help of the different suppliers, whatever is provided by the different competitors or the different um, HIL solution providers. And finally is the load box. So this is how the process flows actually. The host PC real time simula simulator plays a very important role. And your objective is to test the performance of this ECO, algorithms written here, the program written here, everything you are testing around this. And what you are doing, you are simulating the load, you are simulating the, its inputs, everything. So this is called HIL. That's it. Um, so this is how the HIL works. Uh, you are fooling to the ECO that it is actually connected to the system, but this is not actually connected to the system. The, the, the interface around the ECU is simulated with the help of load box or with the help of the model is running here with the help of the real time simulator. But the components, the system parts are very important and that are the host PC, the software, real time simulator, fault insertion unit, and the breakout box, the load box, programmable power supply. So many times 
this fault insertion unit also can be accessed directly through the host PC with the help of the different softwares. And why it is used or why it is directly accessed? The reason is uh, if you want to do the test automation, giving the example of the NI test stand or any Python scripting, you can directly access this fault unit, fault insertion unit. You set up your code and do the testing, um, test automation with the help of this fault insertion unit. So this is the beauty of the fault insertion unit. So it can be even directly accessed with the help of um, uh, some the, some connections like Ethernet connection uh, through the software running on the host PC. So I have covered everything, how the HL works, what are the different components, what is the rationals behind uh, the, this use of the HL, what are the factors which drives the need of the HL, the, the major areas where we need to focus on when it comes to product development. So everything is covered. Now just let's go through the different competitors or the suppliers or the, uh, the manufacturers which provide the HL solutions to you. So out of that, the Opal RT is one of them. So Opal RT is world leader in the development of PC and FPGA based real time simulator. Hardware in the loop testing equipment and rapid control prototyping systems to design, test and optimize control and production system used in power grids, power electronics, motor drives, automotive, trains, aircraft and various industries as well as they are in the R&D centers and the universities as well. So Opal RT is one of the biggest player, one of the uh, main competitor, uh, the main manufacturer who provides the hill setups, the load boxes, the real time simulators, everything they are uh, in the market. The next uh, manufacturer is the National Instrument. Again, the National Instrument offers a hardware, software, and they also offer the services that help you to run a real world data in two insights that drive your business decisions. Choose from product for the desktop design and prototyping to fully automated production test systems. NI is very well known for HIL solutions. The next is a DSpace. So again, the DSpace is one of the biggest player in the HIL solutions. Uh, display HL solution offers at a glance. They are very diversified. Uh, they, they provide the scalable real-time platform. They support of latest automotive bus and network standards. They are in the comprehensive simulation models for the applications ranging from combustion engine to autonomous vehicle and electric vehicles. They complete and fully automatable software tool chain to support continuous integration among others. High fidelity solutions for e-mobility application. Realistic camera, lidar, and radar model can be calculated in real time with the D space heel system. So as like Opal RT, NI very standard, NI um, uh, test suit, national instruments, um, HL solutions, D space is one of the best and among them uh, is a good competitor for the HL solutions. And the next one is a vector. So vectors VT system with the help of VT system, Test systems, functional testing of the ECU and vehicle networks can be easily assembled. Very commonly used, Canoe is the associated test automation software, and it's a very uh, user friendly software. Uh, uh, so they, they support the Canoe. Uh, with the help of that, you can do the test automation. We use the capital scripting um, for doing the test automation. The next player is a Typhoon. Typhoon Hill is a technology leader in controller hardware in the loop. Uh, solutions for e-mobility, e-drives, renewable, microgrids, and other applications. The next player is Plexin. So Plexin's RT box as a control hardware becomes available and HR testing can be used to increase the test coverage. The PLECS RT box together with the PLECS circuit simulator and PLECS coder provides a complete and consistent solution for system level verification and validation of control software and hardware subsystem. So again, Plexim is a new player in the market. Um, so new in terms of, they are also old, but uh, compared to the Opal RT, DSpace, uh, 
the market captured by the Plex, uh, Plexin is uh, quite uh, less compared to National Instruments, Oplart in the D space as well as the Vector. The next time I'm going to talk is the SAP run. So SAP run um, is uh, okay. So speed goat. So speed goat is again uh, one of the um, um, HIL uh, competitor and. Uh, they provide uh, uh, competitive and consistent solution for the system level verification validation with the help of uh, uh, their different solutions uh, uh, for the real time simulators as well as they provide the service to the industry. And the last I gonna talk is a SAP run. So SAP run. Orolia's SCADL simulation engine is a top grade GNSS simulator so that they offer the GNSS simulator that is also very flexible, scalable and customizable. It uses the software defined radios and COTS component of out for from traditional FPGA based simulators. So they provide the HRT solutions uh, providing very low to the zero efficient latency, effective latency. So these are the very um, well known uh, manufacturers who provide the HL solutions. Um, they do provide the real time simulators, the load boxes, the breakout boxes, as well as they provide the software, the test automation tools and everything. So Opalati, National Instruments, DSpace, Vectors are very well known. Typhoon, Plexim, Speedcode, Sapron are not that much known, but again they are competitive compared to the Opalati National Instrument, DSpace and Vector because they are also trying to make a good market to understand the customer needs for the automotive aerospace and the different industries when it comes for the HL testing. So uh, friends, uh, till now I have covered everything uh, starting from the need and uh, the motivation behind the HL uh, when it comes for new product development and the testing of its uh, algorithms and the behavior in high fidelity environment. Uh, what are the different components of the heel, advantages of the heel, and how the power flow happens, and different manufacturers and the competitors who provide the HIL solutions to you for the different industries. So, thanks for watching uh, my video. And uh, if you like this knowledge session, then I deserve at least a like. If you are new to my channel, please like, share and subscribe. And if you are not subscribed yet, please subscribe, like and share with your family, with your friends and with your office colleagues. That's all for the today and see you later. Then I will make you learn something new. Uh, bye bye and have a great day. Thank you.